The hundredth, you're actually a fan of one person. Ain Iemand, one individual who with his charisma, his jests, his jokes, his presence, his friendliness, his amazing young looks, will come onto this stage and talk to you met jullie spreken. Can I have a small applause? Can I have a mediocre applause? Can I have a bleh? Okay, we'll not do that. We'll do the applause. So mediocre again. And then we'll do a huge applause. Here is Richard Harmon! Take a seat. That was... Uh, oh. There are way too many positive adjectives for me are there? in that setup. I think of all the Harmons, you are the best one. Tell that to my sister. Yeah, she doesn't she doesn't realize, but that's she's the worst Harmon. She's the worst one. Yeah, we'll not talk right. about her. Yeah, no. Who please, needs sisters anyway? Please don't. We won't. Yes, we won't. No. We'll talk about you. Oh, no, only me. Only you. <laughs> and hi everybody, thanks for being here. Oh yeah, hello. 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 Say, and, and you can say hi back you we'll do this thing. You say hi everybody, and they will say hi. We'll do that? I think so, we might try. Hi, everybody! Hi! <laughs> yeah, yeah, this is fun, we can do that. We've got 20 minutes to do that at least five times. <laughs> Whenever they become silent, we just make them say hi. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But they're cool people, generally, so that's good. You seem like a lot of cool people. Yeah, so I will straks ook weer tussen jullie springen. I had it aangekondigd, sommige mensen weten dat. And then verdwaal ik me een beetje tussen de vingers die jullie op zullen steken voor vragen. How's your Dutch? <laughs> yeah. Non-existent. <laughs> no, it's not a single word. Not even a single word. Is this word. your first time? Second. In the Netherlands? I've been, I was in Rotterdam seven years ago. Okay. Yes. But ever since, you've forgotten the taste of the Netherlands and the smell and the, to the warmth. The, so you had to come back. I had to come back. Yes. And here I am. All these people are glad you did. I'm happy to be here. I, I, I noticed while looking through your entire oeuvre. Yes. You looked at IMDb, didn't you? And Wikipedia. <laughs> okay, don't believe everything you read on Wikipedia. <laughs> I'll, I'll not go into details then. However, you, you, you do a lot of genre work, a lot of science fiction and fantasy. Yes. Yeah. But in the earlier years, there's a lot of romantic drama as well. I just, in the early years? I was 10. There better not have been any romantic okay. dramas when I was 10 years Weren't old. They? Okay. I did not watch those movies. I just looked at the poster and they look pretty romantic to I, me. Yeah. Are you okay with doing... I'll to change the question to... Are you okay with doing genre work and if, why do you love it so much? I love doing genre work. I love doing any sort of work. Uh, as, a, as an actor, I mean, just working is... is, is, is is, is a great thing. Um, but I, yeah, I love genre work because I'm a fan of genre stuff. I mean, I didn't grow up watching a lot of sci-fi, but then sci-fi ended up changing my life. And through shows like Continuum and then uh, Caprica even, and then obviously The 100 completely changed my life. And horror movies for me, that's a different genre, but horror is probably my favorite genre of films to watch. I think I watched three horror movies last night in my hotel room. Ooh. Would you dare to pick just one favorite horror movie that I'll, impacted your life? Oh, sure. I mean, so, oh, well, actually, you know what? I'll have to go with Trick or Treat because I was in that one when I was 15. And that was the movie that got me not to quit acting and continue trying to be an actor. Well, without that, without, I was about to quit and I booked that movie and it was such a fun time that I knew I have to do this for the rest of my life and I will not give up. And so, that movie did it. So, and it's also a great movie. If you haven't seen Trick or Treat, it is a very fun Halloween, like just a love letter to Halloween. Well, surprise, surprise! All of these people have seen Trick or Treat. They have not. Because no, look, I'm going to ask them, and they'll say yes, of course. They'll say, "Have you all seen Trick or Treat?" Yeah. You see, and we, we actually had a few. Who has seen Trick or Treat? Boom, 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 boom. Bum, 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 bum. I love that. They follow you around the globe. I love this. <laughs> I'm, I, I want to everybody see. get. Hey, jump okay, on you the do couch. comfortable, and I'll do the do the jumping up on the couch. Okay, can you <laughs> can you leave him achteraan goed zien? Can the people in the back still see him? Yeah, I'll get up. I'll get up. I'll get up. <laughs> <laughs> Don't feel obliged. I, I trust me when I say I never feel obliged. <laughs> Don't. 
And here goes. Ah, boink. Ooh, we made it. Blow that's your knee out one of these times when you try that. <laughs> that's my genre moment, right? And that's good. Good superhero huh? genre. Whee! Oh, here. Again, yeah. Oh, there's a question. Just I jumped next to a question. This is perfect. You have a skill. Uh, do you like Amori in real life? A Louisa? So a Louisa who plays Amori? She's one of the nicest people you'll ever meet. One of the most talented actors and easily in the 21 years that I've been acting, one of the best scene partners I've ever had. And when we worked together on the first, she was only supposed to come in for one episode in season two as a sort of like a tryout to see if how Murphy would handle, how the character of Murphy would look being like sort of smitten by someone and sort of like have a crush on somebody. Because up to that point, you couldn't imagine Murphy with anybody. He's not that type, he's not really He's endearing, yes. But he's pretty much like asexual, like he really wasn't like into anybody. So they wanted to try that out and see how I would interact with somebody. And they hired Louisa. And I remember Jason Rothenberg emailing me after the day and was like, how was, how was it, how was she? And I emailed him back and I said, if you don't bring her back, you are making a massive mistake. She is so good and she is right up there with any of the actors we have on the show and she needs to come back. And when she comes back, you put her with me and you put her with me alone. She's my scene partner, nobody else gets her. She's amazing. Louisa, I, have, I could spend all day talking about how amazing, amazing she is. Thank you. Thank you. But we only have 20 minutes, so we'll have to talk about you as well. No, screw that. I'm going to talk about it all day. Well, Louisa, who's, who's after me here? After you? There's a cosplay contest. No, screw that. No. We're going to be here all day talking about There's this. There's some wrestling, too, if you want to join in. I'll fight them. <laughs> and they'll oblige. They will. <laughs> Um, what actor or actress was your favorite uh, to act with on The Hundred? Oh god, well Louisa, really. I mean, but there were so many. Bob was... Bob was my first one that I ever, on that show, was like, oh wow, this guy can play, and he's good. And Bob and I just had this thing that from the second we stepped into a scene together of this competitive nature that we both have. We both grew, grew up playing sports and love like athletics, Bob and I do. Him, uh, he was a much better athlete than me. I mean, I don't know if you could tell that, but he was. But we both had that love and competitiveness, so when we went up against each other acting, and we used that competitive nature to kind of push each other, and the fun of that was just unbelievable. And I miss it to this day, because him and I just had that sort of pushing each other to be better, so Bob was one of the, one of the people on the show. Michael Beach, Isaiah Washington, Adina Porter, J.R. Bourne, Lee Majdu, All Chris Mark, go. And, like, we could go through everybody on that show. It's so good. Like, so good. It's so much fun. Well, seven... I'm, oh, I'm here, right? Uh, hi. <laughs> you, you move quick. <laughs> that's seven seasons, that's a lot. Yes. It's quite a bit. Many, many shows start up, and then after a season or two, they go, ah, no, that's it. But yeah. seven, that's seven. It's very rare. It is. As are you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's true. My mom tells me that all the time. <laughs> she, she asked me to confirm this to you. Tell Cindy I say hi. Okay. <laughs> I'll let her know. <laughs> Please. Hi. Hi. As many science fiction genres usually trigger a lot of philosophical questions, do yeah. you have any space in between learning lines and fighting people and having romances to think about them for you personally, about those philosophical questions? That is an unbelievable question that I've never heard before in all of my years of doing this. That's a fantastic question, and yes, if you're lucky enough, you do have the time to think about what the story is that you're telling and what Because you're never just telling a story, you're proving a point. And it might not even be your point, but it's somebody's point. And that's important. Um, so yeah, you do think about those things. And you do think about what, what you need to do as an actor to convey the point, not of just the story, but the p overall point that you're trying to say. And The Hundred had a lot of that. And we were very lucky to be able to have the time... Like you said, seven down, and if I lost you, you moved so fast. There you are. Yeah, you didn't even move. <laughs> seven That's seasons. how quickly I moved. Yeah, I know. You went over there and back, all in the span of a second. Uh, yeah, so you do think about it when you're lucky. And I was fortunate enough to be very, very lucky. But, uh, I, 
I'll stay here because there's people who started surrounding me. Uh, so that's good. Yeah. But there go my 10,000 steps I was going maybe to make today. They come to me now. Maybe for the cosplay contest, uh, man. I don't know. Okay. Um, so uh, from the series itself, it had a lot of like uh, physical, like running, jumping, and so on and so on. Yes. Uh, at, some of them maybe you did not use a stunt you were the one who's doing it I, for the majority i was i was so happy to be the one doing it there's only a few times where they had to use stunts for obviously insurance purposes uh and also some stunts that i was that even i was i was like no there's no way i can do that someone yeah. else is gonna have to do that basically my question was um how how physically how many physical limitations you had to overcome to do those stunts and how hard was it Oh, I mean, I just love doing stunt work. That's one of my favorite things, especially getting my ass kicked. Like, I'm really good at that. <laughs> I'm so good at that. <laughs> so that, I don't know if there's any physical limitations that I had to overcome. It was just more so just the throwing yourself at it and having fun and being willing to, you know, take, get a few bumps and bruises along the way. And that was, that's part, that was part of the fun of that show, was that we just all had... If we if we had an unbelievable stunt team around us, led by Marshall Virtue, um, and they knew our limitations on the stunt teams, and if they knew that we could do something, and they're like, "Do you want to do it?" And they're like, and they knew me. I was like, "Yes, yes, let me do it." And they're like, "All right, Richard, have fun, have some fun out there. Don't get yourself hurt." <laughs> I imagine them sitting at a table the night before, so let, let's see what we can make in yeah, the future. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He'll say yes. I, okay, here's $10. He'll say yes. That's true. Yeah, and I always did. They would have to stop. The, the thing more likely to happen was they had to stop me all the time. Like, I can do it. I swear I can do it. And they'd be like, Richard, you are not allowed to do that. I'm like, I'll no, do no, it. No, no, let him do it. Let him do it. I, I will do it. it. Yeah, more so that it would always be like, Richard, we would love to let you do it, but Warner Brothers is not going to allow that to happen. No, You're too Rare. So too rare. rare. Hi. Hi. Uh, my question is what season in the hundred did you enjoy filming the most and what season do you think is the best? That's a good two part question. The one that I enjoyed filming the most, they all were so much fun, but see there was something special about season one because I didn't know that I would last any longer than season one so I was just fighting for everything that I got it was just like I don't what an incredible run this is and this incredible character that I did not see coming when I booked it uh, and then season seven was so much fun because it was the end of it was like a victory lap for all of us we all just got to enjoy ourselves and we knew that it was coming to an end and we we got to do, we didn't, I never took it for granted. Not a day in the seven seasons, I never took it for granted. Which one do I think is the best? Season two or five? Which adds up to seven, which is the total which amount, is the of, total seasons. amount so, of seasons. Yeah, very harmonic as a question for you. Good, <laughs> excellent. Hi. Hi. Uh, so, uh, in the 100s, uh, yes. your character, uh, Murphy, he always switches kind of from uh, the good side to the bad side. Yeah, he's a bit of a morally ambiguous character. Yeah, exactly. And I wanted to ask you which one uh, was your favorite kind of side being on the good guys or on the bad? Bad, on the bad because yeah, you can do oh, whatever you bad. want. <laughs> Why is that? Nah, because, because villains are more fun to play. <laughs> Truthfully, like, they're the most fun to play because you don't... The fun of it is, is because they're so freeing to play a villain, because if you're playing a good guy, here's the situation as an actor. When you're doing something as an actor, it's not just what the lines are, what the script says. You also, pick, like, at least the way I act, you're coming up with things on the spot that you feel is right in the character. When you're a good guy, as an actor, you have to think about, does what I just came up with on the spot, and I want to intrinsically throw myself in doing it right now and surprise the other actor with this, does that match the moral compass of this hero? And you have to ask yourself that. Would a hero do, would a good guy do that? Would, would he feel okay about doing that? With a villain, you don't think, you just do. Yeah. You just do, because they don't have a moral compass, and they just go like, I feel like doing it, so, eh, fuck it, I'm gonna do it. Sorry for anyone that doesn't like swearing. <laughs> the, the good guy would eat the crust of his sandwich. Yeah. And, yeah. The, the villain, the villain, to, yeah, the villain, villain will go, ah, yeah, star, starring, you don't care. It's for you, minions. Yeah. Hi. <laughs> uh, 
Uh, over the series, I uh, really kind of started liking Murphy more and more because of his character development. Thank you. Um, and it really grew on me, becoming my most favorite uh, character. I appreciate uh, that. How much influence did you have on the character development yourself, or was it all the writers? I had a, quite a, a bit more than I should have, probably. And that's, that's all in respect to Jason Rothenberg, who is willing, especially with a character like Murphy, like, it was different for every, like, character and actor on the show, how much input they had. I never tried to have too much input, so therefore I had a lot of input. Because it's like, it's like, thank you for not ever asking for anything. What would you like? <laughs> Which was great. And Jason and I, because Jason knew that he didn't write Murphy to be Murphy on the, in the pilot. He was John number one, he was a small character. And he liked what I was doing with it and changing things, so he wrote more. So then it became this love child of what I had created on the pilot and what Jason wanted it to become. And there was this beautiful meld between the two of us. I've always said it, there's only one person that knows Murphy as well as I do, and that's Jason Rothenberg. He knows him. He was the only person that I could ask things about Murphy and be like, anybody else, if someone wanted to tell me what Murphy was thinking, I'd be like, screw you, you don't know what he's thinking. That's mine. No one gets to tell me what Murphy thinks. Only I do. I know him better than you. There's no possible way you can know him as well as I do, except for Jason Rothenberg, because he actually would have legitimate thoughts if I was like, Murphy wouldn't do that. He would be like, ah, 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 yes, he would, Richard, because think about this. And I'd be like, that's a good point. He actually could do that. You know him so well. So it was a perfect 50-50 between Jason and I, and I'm so, that's, again, more than I deserve. Uh, and I thank that man for that. Oh, oh here, yeah, yeah, I'm here. There you are. The people next to me are very, oh, well, well, he's here. Uh, yes. Yeah. I Hi. do this sometimes. Hi. Hi Richard, nice Hi. to meet you. Pleasure to meet you too. Uh, I really love Morphe, this character from The Hundred as well. Thank you. And I was wondering, like throughout your uh, acting career, which training did you find most useful when you tried to build up Morphe, this character? What was the end of the question? Which like which training did you find most useful? Which training. Yeah, acting training. Yeah. I mean, I never took a class. I've, it was sort of, I, yeah, I never took any acting class growing up. I still haven't. Not that there's anything where you should, like, go do acting. If you're interested in acting, like, take an acting class. There's nothing wrong with that. I just didn't. There's a million ways to be an actor. It's, it's not a defined science of how to, how to say words that are given to you. <laughs> like, you can do that in any given way. But the thing that helps me the most as an actor is music. So I create a playlist for every character that I play, um, and I, yeah, so Murphy, I still have that, but I never get rid of any of the playlists, so I can go back to them and be like, oh, that's what I was listening to, like, when I was doing that show and that character. So Murphy, by the end of it, he was the longest one I've ever had, because it was seven years. I think he had, the playlist has, like, 780 songs on it or something. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. Yeah, so music for me, because it just, before doing a seat, you just put it in, People don't, people don't bug you. Like, as much of you have your headphones in, they just don't seem to bug you. They'll do the makeup without talking to you. So everyone kind of knew that on set. Like, if, if Richard has no headphones in, then, like, I'll be the jokester on set, and I'll do whatever. I don't need to think about it. If I have one headphone in, it means, like, you can talk to him, but, like, only if it's really important. If I have two in, it's, like, just do whatever you want to him. Like, he doesn't... Just don't ask him anything. He's just sort of doing his thing. And it helps you get in the right mindset for, for that scene. It's like having your own little, like, score to yourself. And that's that's pretty cool. So, yeah, I would say music for me is the thing that helps me the most in acting. Thank you. Good question. One track in particular for Murphy? Yes. There was a few. Uh, Don't Let Me Be Misunderstood by Nina Simone was one of the big ones. And uh, Villain by David Ramirez. Oh. Oh, so by, by the end, by the end of it, and then Collect Call by Metric. Uh, that was the song that I listened to the most. Spoiler alert: When Amori dies in, se in the end of season seven, that's the song that I was listening to the whole when we shot that. Collect Call by Metric. That and that made me all oh, cry so hard. As you saw, the scene was great. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks to the musician. Yeah, of course. I
I, I, it's come to my attention that a certain person called Josie. Yes. Hi, my name is Josie. Hello. Hi, nice to meet you. Pleasure. Um, I like you, I like your character in uh, 100. Thank you. Um, sorry for my English, I come from Italy. You speak it perfectly. Oh, thanks. Um, it's a stupid question. Can I have an hug? Hug? Yeah. Hell yeah. Uh, uh, this will start a chain event. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, uh, you know what? We're almost out of time, but if they have that any went more... went by so fast. Went by quick... Oh, one more question, and then if they have any more, yeah. they can meet you... Yeah, after. please. Yeah. There, I'm doing literally nothing. <laughs> um, what character were you most sad about leaving the show? Oh, uh, Monty. Yeah, Chris Larkin, for sure. Because that's, that just, to me, was like, I don't get to see Chris anymore. Like I love Chris. We didn't get to. We don't. Ever, we didn't ever hang out because Chris never hangs out with anybody. He was such a homebody. He'd just go home and like work on his music and listen to music. But once or twice a season, Chris and I would always go out to dinner alone, just him and me. And we'd go to Blue Water Cafe in Vancouver. It was always the exact same restaurant. And we'd have our Chris and Richard date nights, and we'd sit down, eat seafood, and. I would blabber and blabber and blabber and annoy him as much as I can because I love annoying Chris. And Chris would pretend to be annoyed, but secretly I know he loves me. And that was a little repartee that we had every every year, and I missed that. And I just emailed him because he doesn't text because he has a flip phone. So I just emailed him at my table about 15 minutes ago because he emailed me two weeks ago and I forgot to get back to him and he was mad. But he didn't leave a subject line on his email, so I don't even know how I was supposed to know what the email was about. <laughs> and he went like, how's the food? Did they I, treat you well? I, I told him at the end of the email, I said, Blue Water next week? <laughs> because I always ask, whenever we talk, I'm like, Blue Water, two, Tuesday at 8 o'clock. And he's like, Richard, I'm not in Vancouver. <laughs> and I'm like, I'll be, I'll be there and I expect you to be there. <laughs> he never shows up. Neither do I, but still. <laughs> Well, I, I think we're going to tr see if they paid attention, if they remembered how we trained them at the beginning of the session. Oh, yeah. But when, when you say something and Hi! They... Hi! Very good. Good. <laughs> see, they, are, they truly are fans, and they're really <laughs> joyous, and they're still giggling and happy to see you here on stage. I'm, I'm happy to see you. I thought nobody was going to be here. This was amazing. <laughs> They'll be running towards your desk in a few moments. Please do. Because Please we'll be saying them. goodbye to you for this stage. Forever. Thank you very Well, for now. For now. Am I dying? Eventually. But let's not get into that now. <laughs> is that all there is? So let's keep dancing. Life? Let's have yeah, a ball. No, that's a song by... by, yeah, by. No, I know. <laughs> ah, you got me into explaining. It's so stupid. It's true that I fell for it. That Thanks, everybody. You're so talented. The most amazing of all Harmons, Richard Harmon! Thank you. Have a great time. You're a great Eddie, by the way. Great Eddie. <laughs>